Welcome back to the EV guys, where we plug you into the electric vehicle world. That was an AI written intro, and it was incredibly cheesy. <laughs> How are you going, Gavin? Not too, Gavin. How are you doing? It's almost yeah, like it the climate's. Hot. It's almost like the climate's just slightly warming up. No, that's no, 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 no. My uncle said that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> and also, electric cars—they uh, are the devil. You. <laughs> Yeah, everyone's got that ankle. Well, no, actually, no, no. My <laughs> uncle you? has been in my videos. He bought a BYD at 03, and he loves it. Oh, far out. Yeah. Crikey. Yeah. Have so, you had any people in the past who have claimed that, you know, they've done the whole, oh, electric cars, they'll never catch on, and then years later, they've come back to you and asked about buying, what, what model should they buy? Because I've got one yeah. that did that. And I remember, I remember what he said. I know it was like 15 years ago. But... Really? What, what, yeah. what did he say, and what did he end up buying? Uh, well, he hasn't bought one yet, I don't think. He might have, but uh, he was basically doing the whole, oh, those electric cars won't catch on. Of course, this was the beginning of the Nissan Leaf, I think. It just This is around 2010 or so. So uh, so he had a case, but at the same time, I knew where the technology was going back then. I knew it was going to it was gonna ramp up. But yeah, no, he was quite adamant that it was a uh, flash in the pan. It's just a just little shopping carts. It'll never catch on. He was quite <laughs> adamant, quite forthright. <laughs> And now he's asking me, yeah, what, what model should I buy? I've heard about these electric cars. You know, they're getting good. It's like, what? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I sometimes think some of these these EV haters, for want of a better word, have actually forgotten why they hate EVs a lot of the time. Or they're being fed some narrative from somewhere that they just don't yes. entirely understand. I think that's, yeah, yeah. When I come to power, yeah. that will change. Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't, be, I like, shouldn't be drinking tea on the microphone. Sorry. No one wants to hear yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I feel like hating EVs now comes with a New Zealand first membership and a three water <laughs> sign in the front yard. I'm not saying three waters is good. I'm just saying that some other people maybe they, there's a crossover there. I don't know. You know that on the southern motorway when you're heading north. Sorry, this is going off topic. But there's those three billboards by uh, by Mercer, the off ramp to Mercer. Oh yeah. Yeah, I suspect that person doesn't like electric cars. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah. It's it's funny how electric vehicles has become one of those issues that's kind of attached itself to that same kind of area of it's crazy hatred. it should be the electric car should be something that brings everyone together because you know the if you're on the, a more conservative voter you'll, you'll be glad that they're using locally grown import uh, locally grown electricity you know free range kiwi electricity none of that imported coal or petrol or anything in the middle east and if you're on the other side you know it's great it's fighting against climate change it's, you'd think it would bring everyone together but no they managed to politicize it somehow yeah yeah Anyway, anyway, mm. really good responses to our last episode. Oh, that was so good. Yes, we've been, we've been told that people will always tolerate us, Gavin, or specifically <laughs> always tolerate you. Well, they have low standards. I think people loved having uh, having uh, Robert and Elliot on the episode. That was so oh. good. Uh, thanks again to them for turning up. I know they've sniffed around the episode, so we'll, we'll you know, hopefully they liked being on our low quality, but hopefully They're amusing. Such nice if, people, if though, aren't they? They are, but EV people generally are. Yeah, that, that's actually that's a good point. Unless you're a bad a, one, unless you're a taxi driver outside one of those Victor charges, we'll get to that. We will get to that. That <laughs> is yes, that's a that's a big news story for this week. Now, also this week, so we've got the news. We've got what you've been driving, uh, and uh, we are going to have a little guest again this week, and that's going to be Warren Wilmot from BYD New Zealand. Now, ah. Warren's pretty open and around the place. And we're going to ask him some curly questions about what's coming. Uh, see if we can't trip him up and get him to get him to expose uh, some <laughs> information <himself>. not released <laughs> elsewhere. I saw Warren today. He was busy doing his best to put thousands and thousands of electric vehicles on the road. So yeah, good on you, Warren. Good oh, on he you. He works hard. Yeah, exactly. Right. So let's cut straight in to the EV news. Right, so the first big story is that the MG4, it's New Zealand's car of the year. Were you surprised at this one, Gavin? No, 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 no. It's excellent. In fact, if I had, say, you know, 50 grand and I was out to buy an electric car, I'd still choose the MG4. It would be mm. a tough choice because I quite like the BYD Dolphin as well, but I'd probably go with the MG4 just because it feels good. Yes, yeah. Look, uh, everyone knows, uh, we've announced this previously on the show that we've given our, well, the or EVs and Beyond, my website EVs and Beyond, gave the uh, New Zealand, well, the New Zealand EV of the Year for EVs and Beyond to the BYD seal, but it was a very close run thing. That MG4 is excellent, and in the context of the award, that is, it's just, it's good. 
And the other interesting thing is now is that that's a number of electric vehicles that have won that award. You know, the, uh, I think, what have we looked at? I should know this. I used to run the award for those of you that uh, that don't know, but I believe the um, Mercedes-Benz uh, EQC won it, the Jaguar I-Pace has won it, the BMW i3 has won it, uh, the BYD Addo 3 uh, has won it. I think it's getting really hard for non-electric cars to claim some of these big awards. What a great problem. Yeah, yeah. So uh, interesting one there. And of course, um, the it's the same around the world. We've seen this week, the I think Car Sales in Australia, one of the big uh, outlets there, they gave their car of the year to the Kia EV9, car we discussed oh, yeah. last week. Wow. Uh, I think MG4 picked up an award with them as well. Um, another car we're going to talk about a little bit later in this episode, uh, won the European car of the year, another EV. So yeah, just so many options out there picking up awards. Uh, yeah, pretty obvious. If you had to pick one car from last year for your, what's, what was Gavin's electric car of the year last year? Oh, last year. Oh, okay. Well, oh, I, I'm, okay. If I, if I had, if I could choose one, it's probably the BYD seal. If I can get one in that slightly powder blue interior. Um, but that's, I mean, it's just, it's a delicious car. That's the best word to describe it. It's fantastic. It's everything you could want in a car. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, that's uh, seal was mine. So yeah, MG4 close, EV9 close. So, so many options. Yeah. They're all winners. The EV9 is a strange machine, isn't it? I love it, yeah. but it's, it's just, it, they built a car and ticked every single box what to put in it during manufacture. It's like yeah. SUV. Yeah. Yes. But make it go fast, yes. But make it efficient, yes. But give it mains power on board, yes. It's just, it's madness. <laughs> oh, it, it's such a cool car. I saw one on the motorway today and it's just, they're just so imposing. Just yeah, it's super. got a presence. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Right, on to the next item. And that is something you uh, hinted at earlier, Gavin, and that is <laughs> the vector free charges. They are gone no more. Well, they, finally. No, they exist no more. They exist no more. No, finally. Actually, I know the first thing people say is, but free is good, right? As free vector charges. No, it's not. Because if you, for example, you look at the Green Lane site, that's really popular. Same with the Constellation Drive site in Auckland, really popular. You want to just pop on in there and recharge your EV9, for example, then you're out of luck. There'll be mm. five, ten people waiting to use that charger, you know, to freeload off the charger. It's not, making it paid has just made it better for everyone, except unless the taxi drivers, because you get retirees and lines of taxis waiting to charge for free on those vector chargers. So how many vector charging sites are going to be taken over by charging it? 17, isn't it? Yes, I should pull this up in front of me. I've got the, <laughs> uh, I've got the news here somewhere. Uh, eight. Eight sites. Oh, 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 sorry. 17 charges, though, at eight sites, maybe. Okay, okay, okay. That must have been the figure I saw. That's, that's brilliant news. Because yeah. have you actually ever managed to get to one of those free charges? They're always in use. When Years ago, when I first started driving electric vehicles, yes, I could get to them, but they were busy-ish then. Yeah. And they already had some reasonably bad habits developing on them at that point. That was before the 30-minute time limit, which was controversial in its own right when they introduced that. Uh, but um, yeah, since then, no, I just don't bother. I go to paid sites. Yeah. Um, because, oh man, it's... And it's intriguing watching some of the behavior, particularly Green Lane. People would queue to get their 30 minutes. And it wasn't yeah. people that needed to get anywhere. If you need to get anywhere, you go to the BP on the other side of the motorway and go over there because it was always empty. It's staggering how low a price they put on their time or how low a value they put on their their time. Like, like yeah. imagine waiting in line, investing two and a half to three hours of your time to save 10. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, if that, I mean, it's a 50 kilowatt, they were 50 kilowatt chargers. How much can your average car get out of them in 30 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't get it. And it's hilarious. As soon as the charge has gone on, have you seen the photos floating around of the yes. airport charger now? Yes, it is. There is lines of taxis because, of course, that was the one at Greenland. All the taxis used to, you know, wait there. And now taxis and retirees to save a few bucks, and now it's paid. It's empty. You can use it anytime you like. Now the t the airport charger is still free, yeah. or at least it was when I saw that photo. And so there are rows of taxis waiting to charge for free. It's it's, yeah. gosh, I mean they're on the clock, aren't they? Isn't that a waste waste of time? Yeah. ChargeNet haven't uh, haven't uh, taken over that one, so I'm not sure what's going to happen there. Interesting. I think with the taxis, I think now it's a it's a um, a software queue rather than a 
uh, physical queue for the taxi drivers so they can basically charge while they're waiting for the okay. airport and that takes some time but yeah interesting to see i think it means now that we'll actually see your yeah, charging it will be able to expand in auckland other suppliers will be able to expand because there is com- competition there there is the ability to make some money from a charger and maybe you know as much as i love those abb chargers we'll see uh charging it put in some tastier hardware i'd like be to see them that. Yeah, be them some big 350 kilowatt Opatronics or maybe some higher output uh, uh, other options. But uh, yeah, great to see that finally going. So yeah. Now, in other news that is somewhat smaller, have you seen Casper? I've and I'm heard not of talking it. about. I'm not the talking ghost. about the friendly ghost. No, I've heard of Casper, but I don't. For for me and anyone without a clue, tell me what is it. So Casper is a, currently it's actually a little petrol vehicle that's on sale uh, in uh, Korea and India, but they are developing an electric version of it that will, that's going to go on sale, they reckon, in Europe for about the equivalent of 35000 New Zealand dollars. So a little mini SUV, uh, about a 250 kilometer range, lithium ion phosphate battery, um, yeah, 3.8 meters long. So Wow, smaller than the smaller than the car that's in your driveway now, which yeah. is very small already. Wow, um, that's I, I like it. I do I like small cars, especially if you're in the city. They're just so much easier to live with, easier to park. The tires cost less, less electricity. This is brilliant. Mm. But wow, okay, this is intriguing. What does it look like? Uh, it's yeah, a little SUV. I'm not sure you've seen the venue, the Hyundai small SUV already. Oh, looks yeah. a bit looks a bit like that. Looks a bit like a. Uh, what do they call it? A Suzuki Ignis, that little okay, mini okay. kind of yeah, yeah, retro yeah. inspired one. SUV, cute little roof rails. Um, yeah, pretty darn funky. So three point interesting meters. to see if that came in and yeah, price wise challenge some of that cheaper Chinese stuff. Oh, Though wow. I suspect that Hyundai being Hyundai, they might struggle to get it much lower than what an MG four fifty one kilowatt is, which could cause problems for them, I guess. I mean if again mg451 kilowatt or like a 25 30 kilowatt uh our mini suv that, that goes not quite as far mm. Mm. still if it's priced right well i don't know would you because then you could just buy a used nissan leaf for much less but then of course it's a useless it's a used nissan leaf so yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. battery that's, charging that's... all those other problem problems so yeah. mm. Mm. interesting now on to some tastier korean metal not the, the Casper isn't tasty. The Kia EV5 is coming to New Zealand mid-year. And this has uh, appeared in New Zealand this week. They've been testing it. It is an interesting looking vehicle. Steals a lot from the EV9 styling, but more, it's chunky rather than the kind of swoopier look of the uh, EV6. Yeah, they've had engineers in New Zealand looking at that. So that's an interesting one. Have you had much of a look or read about the EV5? Only the picture I've, se- I've seen of one crawling around the streets of New Zealand. But yeah. uh, I know nothing about, do you know what battery size it has or, or anything? Have they released any specs? Well, they haven't. I mean, we know a little bit about the EV5 itself, but we don't actually know what it is they're looking at bringing to New Zealand as such. So it's uh, obviously shares with the other uh, existing you know, product out there, the other um, uh, Hyundai Kia product. Though the interesting thing is, is that uh, current assembly is in China uh, and that it has a... Uh, lithium ion phosphate battery in the smaller of the two battery sizes so they've got a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery and a um uh 82 kilowatt hour battery i uh, believe that uh, lithium uh, ion phosphate battery is a byd sourced unit uh you know byd are a battery supplier as well um so yeah uh, hmm. this could be a tasty prospect bit for new zealand you know basically a an EV9 size down to kind of more that RAV4 size. Uh, so probably it's, a, it's a larger car or is it a mid-sized car? It's a mid-sized car. So okay. I, I guess kind of directly competing with, say, the uh, BZ4X or the or Subaru Solterra, I think bigger than an Edo 3 by a reasonable amount. Um, so, yeah, it's it could be a really interesting hmm. vehicle for here. Uh the question, I guess, is whether we're going to get a Chinese-built one or a whether they're going to build, transfer some production to, to uh, Korea. If it is China, that could mean maybe lower prices. Don't know. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Kia are generally pretty coy on 
what they are uh, bringing down here. They're, they're quite quiet until stuff actually lands. So, yeah, we both like the EV9. So anything that's EV9 like, yeah. So the seats in the EV9 are great. Gosh, I don't <laughs> want to keep don't turn this into the EV9 podcast, but yeah, no, they are they are impressive. Except, well, except the beeping. Yes, that will be on oh, my videos coming out on Friday evening. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Interesting. Yes, well, so don't forget to go and uh, subscribe to Ecotricity. So you oh, get yeah, yeah, yeah. To watch that EV9 video as soon as it lands. As soon <laughs> as it lands. Uh, really quick one well, on this. We've touched it before. Uh, Volvo EX30 is now arriving in local showrooms. You can bother your uh, your Volvo dealer and say, where is the EX30? I want to go drive it. You're a bit of a fan of that car. I like it. It's Well, I like small cars, so that's already it's got a, my tick of approval. Uh, but... The interior, I'm really looking at seeing how it feels to sit in it, what they've done with space. Uh, did, was I right in remembering they used a lot of denim, recycled denim? Yeah, all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah. Ah, um, okay. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I've, I've got one in April. I pick one up in April. So I'm going to yeah. go. I'm looking forward to taking that for a good drive. That should be good. I'm yes. going to take one to uh, um, Electricana in New Plymouth. Yeah, I got a message asking if I was going to go to that this year. and. I think I might, and maybe we should record an episode there. Let's let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, sixty nine kilowatt battery starts at seventy four nine ninety for the rear wheel drive. Got to love rear wheel drive, uh, and then up to an uh, ultra twin motor performance for eighty four nine ninety. The eighty four nine ninety one actually isn't terrible value if you think about it. Premium all wheel drive performance vehicle about that eighty five mark that puts you kind of around the same as a Seal or a long range Model Three. So, yeah. Interesting no. option there. Now, have you ever thought of designing your own electric car? Well, yeah, there's one behind me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean from scratch? Yes. So Polestar uh, is joining forces with Mattel's Hot Wheels brand for its 2023 design contest. Uh, this year's contest brief invites designers to surprise the judges with submissions propelled by the imagination of their youth. So Polestar being involved. Hopefully this is EVs we're talking about being designed. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Go and design an EV and send it into this competition. The entries close on March 5, 20, and then you've got to have your actual design in by April 16. It's careful. They don't, they don't want to do a Homer. Remember the Simpsons car? The, the, the Homer Wait. design. Are you serious? Have you got one? The Homer. They actually built? No way. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. I love it. Oh, far <laughs> out. I've never seen one before. A little that Matchbox model. Yeah. That's yeah. wicked. Uncle Herb. <laughs> now, Aptera. Uh, they have secured $53.8 million for solar EV production. And the reason this is interesting is I'm going, Aptera is still alive. Do you remember what the Aptera is? Yeah. They, they, they was the, 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 like the Cessna shaped car, very sleek shaped car. And then they disappeared and now they've come back. So apparently um, they still exist and they've, yeah. They got funded. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they've... Uh, Look, let's be blunt. In the world of vehicle production, $53.8 million is nothing. That's not a lot. Um, even for a handbook vehicle, uh, they're still tracking along. Uh, their debut product, the launch edition vehicle, has an estimated 643.7 kilometer range, 400 miles, and someone's just gone in. It's an intriguing it. vehicle, isn't it? Yeah, about 700 watts of solar cells, enabling an additional 40 miles a day from purely solar energy. So if you're average Auckland commuter, you could basically do all your commuting without ever plugging in um so yeah do you think it'll ever make it to to life oh no <laughs> i mean maybe but it's always going to be such a niche product it's yeah. because it's, i mean it's it's how, how can they even get crash safety rating for that thing it can't yeah. surely yeah <laughs> it's always going to be like a quadricycle or something right yeah or, or, no it's oh. got three wheels isn't it how, how many wheels it does it have it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's three. It's, yeah. it's it's a niche product. I I like things that are different, but uh, I'm kind of shallow in that I like a car to look like a car, so I I wouldn't buy one. But for the more fringe benefit, not fringe benefit, so the more on the fringe uh, EV guys, they might consider one. Yeah. But it's not me. I'm too I'm too boring. I'm too dead inside and old fashioned. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's it for the news this week. Let's jump on to the next section. And I'd throw this to you, Gavin. What have oh. you been driving? Ah, well, 
In my driveway, you alluded to that earlier, I have the Jeep Avenger electric Jeep sitting there. And by all accounts, on the specs, just looking at the specs alone, it's very unremarkable. But I've fallen in love with it. So I've had one in my drive too. We've both had the exact same car for the last week. And that Did, car What do you think? Is... What do you like? Did you like it or do you love it? Or are you just you know, ambig uh, yeah, ambivalent? It's, it is okay at doing everything, but the sum of all its parts makes it work really well. Like, <laughs> it steers okay. Performance is okay. It rides well. Ride is actually one thing it does very well. Size-wise, it's okay. It's got a big boot, plenty of space in the front, but not much of a back seat. But I think it looks fantastic. It's quite charming. Uh, I like the fact that the climate control stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It just works. It, it, it's, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not a, oh, it's a city car. And that's what, you know, I was talking to the, the folks at uh, the, the warehouse that uh, releases them, Attico. Uh, it's a city car. They, they, don't, they don't pretend it's not. But you can go long distance in it. Because it does, you know, it'll probably do about 320 k's yeah. or so per charge on the highway. So it's a just over a 50 kilowatt usable battery, 54 nominal yeah. uh, kilowatt hour. I'm, I'm terrible at adding the hour to the kilowatt. Um, <laughs> charges at, I think, up to 100 kilowatt. Um, uh, yeah, and it's relatively efficient. I, I was tooling around today getting about 15 something out of it. Uh, so yeah, 300, 320, 330, 340. The thing is, so it's uh, not, it's it shouldn't it shouldn't wow me because the acceleration's zero to one hundred and nine seconds. It's okay. <laughs> it's not a four wheel drive. It's only available in front wheel drive, so it's not an off roader. Even though it looks but like it's got a drive shaft be. tunnel in the back seat, which is ter- it like takes up <laughs> a big chunk of space because there is a petrol version somewhere. Um, yeah, I, I wonder think the how interesting hard it thing would... with that car is that. When I saw it coming, everyone's like, oh, it's another E2008. You know, you've got that Stellantis platform, E2008, Citroen EC4, uh, the um, uh, Mocha E, all those kind of things. It's not. It's, it's, I think it's actually the next generation platform. It's closely related to the Fiat 500E and the Fiat 600E, and it feels like it. It feels closer to a 500E than it does to an E2008. Did you get the same vibe? Yeah. Uh, although having a bit more ride height, uh, and more suspension travel. It's it's it's, it's a little little more lively on the corners, um, but it still it still handles really well. Once you put it into a corner, I did that today. Put it into a few corners, and it's actually surprisingly good. Hmm. I mean, it is it is you know a higher vehicle, but because of its low center of gravity, it's still really good. I didn't push it too hard because it's not designed for it, but it's it's a surprisingly fun vehicle to drive. I, I wish it had a little more performance a little bit yeah. more oomph uh especially off the mark but for the city it's perfect it's great I, the only thing that's gonna it would disappoint me if i owned one is it because it, it feels like it's an off-roader driving it it's it feels like a really easy to drive off-roader and i know i'd want to take it off-road and i know i can't and, and it's it got even snow has mode. off-road modes yeah it's got Sand, snow mud, mode and mud mode and i did drive up a little grass bank today just to see what would happen of course it's <laughs> a, a bank that any car could handle but it was fun i felt like a yeah. real jeepster I, I do believe there is a potential concept for a four-wheel drive one uh coming it has been shown whether it will make it this way so i'm looking out uh new jeep avenger 4x4 june next year uh but i'm not sure if that's um plug-in hybrid or full electric i'm hoping no. it's full electric uh, uh, i'd love that i'd really love that one thing i've always wanted it would be an electric suzuki jimny like factory yeah. built it's just i mean who wouldn't want that imagine a, a little nimble off-roader you could take you know in the dirt i mean the, that if i'm not wrong the jeep is only 1200 kilograms yeah. Which is stupidly it's a, light. It's a light little vehicle. It's, a, it's a, a neat little vehicle. Yeah, so there is. There's a 4x4 electric one, potentially. Now, will it make it here? Not sure. Mm. One of the things that could hold that back is the price. Now, when they sent out the release for this initially, they uh, said it was, you know, 59990 drive away. And you look at the spool print, and that's post uh, clean car discount. Yep. This car is actually 69 and you can get some serious vehicle, but you could buy a Tesla Model Y for the price of this thing. And you've got to really like this thing 
to buy this over a Tesla Model Y. It's, it's the less practical car of the two, but there is something about it. I mean, if I was put in this situation, I guess I'd take the Model Y, but the Model Y is it's much bigger and it's, it's not the same feel. You don't yeah. feel the same driving. You know, it took me a few days to figure out why I like the Jeep so much, because by all accounts, I shouldn't. It's because, this is going to sound really shallow and start the violins, it makes me feel younger. That's what it is. I think I put it down to that because I feel yeah. like I'm off-roading with dad in a simple car, like, an, like a, it's got a simple black interior. It just, it's, it's, it's nostalgic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, it doesn't have to be that much cheaper. I said to uh, the team at Ateco today, look, $5,000 off and you'd be on the money. And they were sort of getting close to that when they were doing the pre-discount Price, the price when the discount was there, that was more like, if you work it out, 67 something because of the driveway aspects and mm. uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, I think its competition is not, it's not Model Y, it's not even looking at the BYD stuff. This is for people who want a funky little city car. Yeah. So realistically, it's going to be competing with the new, e, new electric Mini. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they go face to face. You know, uh, I think it's, it's the perfect car for someone who's got a little bit of cash, want something that's got a little image, but hasn't owned an electric car before, and they want something to get into because it's so effortless to operate. It's yeah. got the air conditioning buttons, which I know now that if I want to adjust the temperature, I just slide my hand along until I hit the volume, and it's that button right next to the volume. I don't have to take my eyes off the road. It's fantastic. Mm. It's it's buttons for everything. It's it's still got you know, wireless Apple and Android connectivity. But it just it just does everything, and it's, yeah. it's not a rocket ship. You won't go you know six hundred k's on a charge, but but it's all right. It's it's a simple, easy to drive car. You know what this would also be great for companies that have like reps out on the road doing branding, like you see like the the Coke cars and all that kind of stuff, or or like the Red Bull cars with the Red Bull can on the roof and a yep. couple of young ladies cruising around on them. Perfect car, eye catching, a bit funky, but super practical, super efficient. Yeah, Gosh. it's got. There's so much possibility there. They just need Imagine to trim if, that price a little bit. Yeah, and if they could make a, a a soft top version as well, that could be fun. V difficult with a four door, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, like imagination's going well. It's just it's a, it feels good to drive. It's it's even though it shouldn't because it's not. It's not everything I always say I want on a car. So it's it's weird. It's it's con confused me that one. Yeah, it, look, it's one of those cars. It's, it's like I always t rate a car by whether I go and jump it or go and jump into my own car. And there's cars which I will favor my own car over. BZ4X is a prime example. This is in that camp. I just found myself naturally jumping in it. Just easy to easy to work with. Mm. One little foible I found was it's got a foot swipe system for the rear tailgate. So you swipe your foot yes. under the tailgate or kick and it opens the okay, door. Okay, I, I know what you're about to say because it's probably happened to me a few times today. Go on. <laughs> you go and do that. And then it does want to open because you're standing there and it thinks you're a wall. Because oh. when I lean in to put something in the boot, my foot goes to, under the car just enough for it to think, oh, you want to close the boot. And, and it starts beeping and I've got to leap out of the way. Does it try and eat it's, you? Yeah, that, yes, yeah I think a couple of times. It's active in the back of that car. But uh, yeah, look, that is, <laughs> that's a cool one. Um, yeah, so that's what, that's what we've been driving. Um, well, the, most recently, other stuff that's uh, been floating around is I'm driving a BYD seal again. Because I'm driving it to Christchurch next week. Oh, yeah. My BYD seal video is out tomorrow. It's taken me a long time to get there, but this is one of my more beautifully produced videos. It's oh, like okay. 18 minutes Look long. That. Looks pretty bling. Uh, and uh, we've got the BZ4X uh, video coming out as well. You've got your Kia EV9 video coming out. Yep, that's Friday. Anything else recently PM. that's not doing as well as you wanted to that you want to kind of give a nudge there? Uh, well, the everything electric uh, video. It did okay. It's doing okay. I think mean, it's what's had like six and a half thousand views, which is all right. Um, You've overtaken but, mine, so don't be greedy. Well, no, I mean it's, I'm not greedy. It's um, and a lot of people have said it's it's a, a few people in the comments have said this is the best best video of the event they've seen. Maybe they've only seen two, mm. maybe one. Um, but uh, yeah, that'd be nice if that got a bit more airtime. But um, that's that's on the Ecotricity YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's, a, there's so much cool stuff at that event. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. We're going we're gonna to book our tickets for next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just such the vibe there is so good. Because, you know, like when you walk around car events uh, or car shows, for example, if you're an electric car nutter, you've always got to hold your tongue a little bit or be careful who you're talking around because you'll, you'll get uninvited 
education from, oh, yeah, those electric cars, you know, um, you know, they're no good, they catch fire, or they don't go far, whatever, you know. And, and it's like, oh, bugger off. Um, you know, just I just nod and smile. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Interesting. Okay. But, but there at Everything Electric, we're all part of the same tribe. We all know electric's great. It's fun. It's efficient. It's powerful. You know, it, it's, it's great. You're, you're amongst the, the, the tribe. I feel like that's my church now. I can't wait to go back. Same here, and, and we will be back. Now, before we, we go over to the guest, I thought maybe we'll just, I'm just going to go and dip into the comments section on the three episodes we've put up so far. We have just comments. If, we've got comments. <laughs> I'm joking. We've got I don't comments. see the comments. <laughs> some of them are, uh, um, uh, some of them are uh, 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 just, you know, great video guys, nice support, but we'll run through it for the insurance. Uh, did you hear that, Gavin? Robert said that you've got the NZ fully charged job if you open every time with a cracker like you don't on stage. That was terrible. So I said a, um, a joke on stage uh, about, well, facilities in men's rooms, uh, homemade facilities in which one cuts a hole. Now, I, I'm not speaking from experience, I promise. But one cuts a hole and then receives service. Uh, you can use your imagination. And I said that joke on stage, you know, uh, and then I wasn't sure if the joke bombed or not. And uh, then I said the same joke to Robert Llewellyn during the podcast, or just before we recorded the podcast, and he laughed his head off. So mm, yeah, he did. That's that's good. I think I've got that on video. We could probably clip that at some point. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got uh, surprise, surprise. Kiwis with something interesting to say. What's the word <laughs> coming to? It's from Aussie Ideas Man, apparently. Um, where are we? Uh, and someone commenting on. Oh, yeah, sorry. A number of comments uh, about station wagons. Did you say station wagons? And I said two station wagons, and they're saying, that's just greedy. Although if they could not cost 200k, it would be quite nice. Um, so people love it, the idea of station wagons. Um, uh, yeah, so a few lovely comments on there. We do love the comments. I do. If you go through, we go. We do try and answer them. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I was, after 40 years of driving combustion cars, uh, and people have just told me that it's better than my EVs because other cars can refuel in five minutes. After 40 years of driving on petrol, only now people tell me this. Yeah, I uh, didn't say the comments all made sense. This was fun to watch. Thank you. I got booted out of the tiny home for walking on the carpet. Ah, yes. Yeah, so, you know, I saw the sign, don't walk on the carpet. And I saw the guys are pretty, they're pretty keen on telling you. Was that, was that tiny home already pre-sold perhaps? Or maybe they just want to I keep wonder. it really clean. Yeah, yeah. Um, love you two. Surely there can be a better name for your collaboration. I like the EV guys. It works. Yeah. I mean, what else? What I mean, throw a suggestion in there. We won't use it, but throw it in there anyway. <laughs> see, see what? What else could yes. there be? We got we got a, we got a couple of options here. Uh, Te EV Rua. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, EV Opango. Again, I'm sorry, I can't translate that. Um, I'd be open to it. Uh, lots of people are saying great, great seeing us at the show. Um, oh, the people there were brilliant. Top job, guys. Getting to see you, see the show from the comfort of home and not having to travel the four thousand kilometers to get here, get there. It's funny they don't live stream it, eh? Like at least the panel discussions. It'd be great to live stream it because it's wall to wall panel discussions. Someone said that in one of the comments as well. Someone criticizing the audio as they always do. Um, it was tough. We were in a tough situation. It was really loud in there. Right. So that's the comments. Don't forget, go to EV, oh, cool. uh, sorry, the EV guys, uh, .co .nz, where you can find all the podcasts from, and go to the YouTube channel, comment, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. We've only got to get about another 800 subscribers before we can monetize there. So, oh, really? You know, Far yeah. Yeah. Come on, until, make it rain. <laughs> until then, I think YouTube's taking all our money from us. So, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Think, anyway. of, the, think of the children. Yes. I, don't know, I don't know how that works, but it works. Right, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll have our special guest for the episode. Hello from my late night editing session, yes, I'm sick, my voice is terrible, but it doesn't stop me from bringing you a quick message from our sponsor, evfinance.co.nz. Now, as we've said before, if you're listening to this podcast, you've probably already got an EV, or you're looking at buying one, two, three, or many. EV Finance can help you out. Just go to their website, fill in a really simple form, and their brokers will go and find you the best loan possible for getting you into an EV. Don't forget that as regards to saving money, you're better off just going and getting the EV now and uh, you know not waiting because you're going to save so much on fuel that it kind of accounts for the payments a little bit. Not that I'm 
be here to give any financial advice as such. But the team at evfinance.co.nz will find you those uh, those correct loans. They will give the advice they, that you need and they'll get you on the road really fast. They can, in some cases, turn around a loan in the same day as you apply. So thanks again for all the support uh, from uh, evfinance.co.nz. Go check them out. Right. So as we mentioned earlier on, we have a special guest today. Warren Wilmot from BYD Auto New Zealand. Uh, Warren, thanks for joining us. What are you sitting in there? I'm sitting in a sealed performance. So uh, thanks for having me on the show today, guys. Nice to see you. It's good to see you. Now, you, we've, you know, we're all friends here, and I'm going to cut straight to the really important question. Who and why was Tinder installed <laughs> on a dolphin that both you and Gavin drove? Well, that was very much for Gavin's benefit. I've seen some of his social media posts. Um, you know, and he's got to have he's got to have something to do while he's waiting to charge. So, um, yes, that was a bit of a side load gag there. But uh, yeah, did you did you use it, Gav? No, I haven't used Tinder. It's, it's hard to promote a product that you don't believe in. You know, I've seen me. What about you, Warren? You're you're, you're not enough. exactly not single yourself for all those ladies out there in EV world. Did I, you I am, do a bit of I swiping? I have one great love, and her name is BYD, and I share that love with a few other people as well. So. <laughs> oh God, that's, what a corporate-friendly answer, isn't it? <laughs> that's a bit. That's a bit sad. I mean, oh, uh, you know, look, <laughs> you can. You, it's okay. You can. You can be open about Tinder, Warren. I met my wife on Tinder, so I'm not exactly really? gonna. Go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. 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 No, no, no Tinder profiles for me right now. Yeah, we've yeah. got electric so, cars to sell. That's the main thing. Yes, I, I do sadly think my wife loves her BYD Addo more than she loves me now. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that seal that I've got parked outside might slightly distract uh, her. In all seriousness, no, though, um, there are more apps coming for B the BYD App Store. We are looking at the New Zealand top 10, um, and we're hoping to have more apps in the back half of the year. So um, we've got a great big computer system on the cars, and um, you know, to have more things like Trade Me, like Tinder. Um, you know that's that's all good. Yeah, because it's a bit of a, a bit of a question. It's something that I, I will you know give you a little bit of nudge for. A lot was promised when uh, we when the car was launched, mm -hmm. and we're still we've you know been waiting for a lot of this stuff to come through. Is it being delayed just because you're trying to get it exactly right, or what's the delay on some of these software yeah, upgrades? Look, I think we've learned some lessons along the way. Right, rushing to get things in market when they're not quite correct is not the best thing to do. So we'd rather have things um, as accurate as we can before going to launch and rushing things out to market. But um, you know, a lot of things we have promised have come out, and um, and the cars are improving. And that's the great thing with a connected car, be it a BYD or anything else. The longer you own the car, the better it's going to get. Yeah. Yeah. When can we expect kind of the next uh, round of updates for cars that are out there, particularly the Atos, I guess? So there is an update coming for both Atto and uh, and Seal. Um, typically, you might see an update, at, I'm picking about once a quarter. Um, we, the, the, the team at BYD are very plugged into um, our customers, and uh, we actually have a team of engineers based in Australia now, and they come across New Zealand. We've got, got them coming here on Monday. We talk to the market. We get feedback. Uh, we're trying to get things adapted and, and um, right for this market here in New Zealand. So um, some things don't happen straight away, particularly when you start playing with safety, safety systems. Yeah, there's a lot of testing that has to go um, on in the background, and we've also got to make sure that any changes we do comply with all the um, European uh, certificates or ADR certificates as well. So the cars have to legally comply as well. It's not just a... The simple thing is doing some coding and making a change, and she's all good. Uh, there's a lot of testing and uh, compliance that has to happen all the way through. I'm not sure checking Netflix on requires ADR compliance. Nope. Well, yeah, but it has to be um, it has to be such a system that's safe and and fits in with um, local legislation as well, right? You can't watch mm. Netflix while you're driving or the cars in motion. Um, there's also licensing issues and all sorts of other stuff as well. Can I ask a really stupid question about the karaoke system built into the BYD? <laughs> The uh, the dolphin is it on all of them now? Uh, yeah, so it's on Seal and Atto. It will be coming on the dolphin. We're hoping we actually have an OTA for dolphin, maybe towards the end of next week, um, and that will have the karaoke mode on there. Uh, unfortunately, all the, the songs. Sorry, the, all the songs though. Like it's got a yes. database of, of you know, bucket loads of songs. Where are they um, stored? Are they streaming or are they on the on the no, car? They're on the car. They're on the car. You don't need connectivity for it. Yeah. How much data is it? Is it? How much storage are you using? 
Oh, um, I don't actually have that figure. I haven't actually looked at it, but there's there's plenty of room on that on there. Huh, okay. I think the the rather than being videos of the song, they're actually like a bunch of graphics that the cat that the yeah. software mixes up on its own to to save That's data. Right. Um, we we may have gone and purchased that app and a monthly subscription to get all the songs for our TV at home as well because we have kids and <laughs> oh, we'll have a microphone shortly. I know they're in the next container of uh, parts coming through, so people will be able to uh, purchase those, and we might even give a few microphones away to uh, BYD owners on this on this podcast, maybe. Are yeah. you going to bring in any other unusual products? Because I saw um, a friend of mine in Texas sent me a picture of BYD brand hand sanitizer. <laughs> oh, we have that already here in New Zealand. Oh, our, do you really? um, oh, okay. yeah, our, our dealerships all have uh, BYD hand sanitizer. We have uh, BYD um, windscreen washer fluid, um, all sorts of things. Yeah, I know <laughs> okay. we need to work on our merch. I constantly get asked for our merch, but uh, for New Zealand, we also like to support local businesses. So if there's any local merch suppliers, I'm more than happy to talk to you. We we prefer to use the local stuff where we can. Got a couple of your models in the background there. Very tall. The V8. <laughs> oh, you see, I've, still, I've got the same model you have, the uh, the Dolphin, but still in the box. I've got a special one that was given there. That it's, it's a bit unwrapped there. There's actually an Addo 3 tucked away there. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, one those plus. are very, very hard to get, guys. There's not too many of those uh, here in, in New Zealand. There's probably only about 40 of them floating around the country. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm. Uh, what, you know, we've looked, we were at, we've got Dolphin, we've got uh, Addo 3 Seal. Mm-hmm. What's next? Is Seal U kind of next off the yeah, line? Yeah, I've made, I've made no secret about it. We are launching our first super plug-in hybrid um, this quarter. Um, we'll have pricing out soon, and uh, hopefully the cars will arrive uh, before end of the first quarter, maybe maybe start of the second quarter. Um, really looking forward to that car. It's uh, it's based on this um, what they call the Song platform, um, so it's the latest uh, facelift of that car, and it's the second most popular selling electrified car in the world um, they sell more of that product than anything else at byd and it is just such a lovely car do you know what the tow rating is on it yeah we're working it's a, well, it was never designed to tow people don't tow things in china um, yeah it, it currently it's 1300 kilos it might be slightly more but um, okay. it's currently we currently have a tow bar designed we have a, a example of the vehicle in the country that we are uh, just undergoing away our testing with at the moment so people might have seen that out, out and about on the weekend or out in the car park. Um, and I know people have spotted a couple of those units uh, floating around Australia as well. But what an amazing car. I mean, you can you can drive it like a RAV4 if you want with a flick of a switch and you're in a, to a mild, mild hybrid mode, or you can flick, drive it in an EV mode. You get to choose. Um, and then you've got the three odometers on the car. So you've got an odometer for the car, the total mileage. You've got an odometer for the EV kilometers that you're using. And then you've got an odometer for the um, when the petrol engine's engaged. Um, so very easy to track road user charges into the TA if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how much is, is a road user charge going to hit the PHEVs? I mean, have you had a look at that? I mean, is it going to well, make it hard you know, to sell a plug-in hybrid vehicle? Um, it's certainly seen as a deterrent or a detractant or a, or a disincentive. Um but I think if you listen to uh, what Minister Brown has said in the past, universal ruck is coming for all cars. Anything that's got four wheels is on the road. You can expect um, road user charges on all your petrol cars. You know, he's talking sooner rather than later, like maybe next year, but certainly within this term of the government, it's going to happen. Um, so mm-hmm. it's just a fact of life. Um, and that means the excise duty um, on your fuel gets a little bit cheaper. So what else is coming this year that Gav can actually drive? Because we know he is a bit of a... <laughs> No petrol motor policy. What can you, know, you drive this year? There's a, there's a lot of uh, noise about our ute, which again is a plug-in hybrid. Um, mm. But again, this technology is different. It's a super hybrid. So you can just run it on EV mode 100% of the time. Um, and uh, we have in the works a very large SUV coming. Um, and we might even have some commercial product at um, a further point. So your potato score, Gavin, on a van. Um, we'll see how many tons of potatoes we can get. All right. Okay. okay. So far, the Peugeot <laughs> e-partner is the champion. PSC, oh, I think yeah, it's on PSC of 110 or something. And I've carried 500 kilos of, of spuds in the back. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, that's a lot of spuds. It's a lot of chips. Yes, yes. Uh, I say is if you want to see the future of BYD um, at an event, there is no better event than Mystery Creek at the field, uh, field days in June. June 12th, actually. 10 a.m., mark it in your calendars. So, so what are you going to have there? I'm guessing you've said before you're going to have the Ute there. I guess you'll have the CLU. Uh, mm-hmm. Could this future large SUV or this future commercial product be there as well? We'll have to wait and see, Richard. 
Uh, <laughs> the thing is, he knows he's just not telling us. <laughs> if I push the stop record button, <laughs> <laughs> ignore the red light flashing in the top yeah, corner yeah. of your window. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, um, I mean, we, we talked about Ruck there for a second. I mean, are you do you think that's going to hit EV sales as well? I mean, are you not that stressed about that? And do you think the market's going to come, how quickly do you think the market's going to come back from this kind of post-CCD kind of lull we're experiencing in the moment? Yeah, look, it is really, really tough. I mean, we went from selling 653 cars in December to 40 in January. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I've never seen a cliff like this in my career. Certainly, we were expecting it. Um, you know, I think uh, the retail punters, that market, the retail market's probably going to be down 30% uh, on, on the EV market this year. Um, but on the other side of the coin, you still have fleets that need to decarbonise, right? And all government departments have a target of being 100% EV by the end of 2025 financial year, right? Um, the easiest way to do a carbon reduction in a, in a, in a business or a fleet, is, uh, sorry, in a, in a corporate environment is to target the fleet and flip that switch. So um, we are seeing a significant increase in fleet inquiry already this year. But yeah, certainly retail is incredibly quiet. I don't think that's just limited to um, EVs, though. I think the whole market's considerably dampened right now. I have a question, Warren. We saw, or at least I saw this morning on LinkedIn, someone shared a picture of a BYD advertisement, and it was in Mandarin, and it had four characters to say, electric cheaper than petrol or cheaper than combustion. Mm-hmm. So they, they, these are cars that are electrified cars that were selling for equivalent of 11000 US dollars in China. That's right. Will we see anything like that anytime soon? Or well, first of all, what are the cars? Do you know? Uh, yeah, you're probably talking about the Quinn, which is a very yes. popular selling sedan in China. They've just uh, released the Honor Edition, which is a um, basically a base spec car, a smaller battery, less spec, those sorts of things. It's it's um, you know BYD make more than thirty different models, and they've got um, five different brands right that come fall under BYD. We will always look to bring cars that make sense for the New Zealand car market. But you've got to remember, right-hand drive is such a tiny percentage of the world, such a tiny percentage of the world um, car sales. Um, so to produ- put a production line in, to produce a car, you've really got to have significant volume to make financial sense to do that. Um, so, look, it really helps if other markets such as Australia, UK, South Africa, Japan, if they have a desire for a certain model, it certainly helps for that business case to bring those cars forward. Um, will you see other models? Um, look, the answer is potentially. It's It's got to make business sense. Um, and people always do like to uh, compare the price in mainland China to the price here in New Zealand. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a, a Hyundai, a, a BYD or whatever. Prices in different car markets, there's a lot of different, it's not even the same car or the same um, same spec. Um, uh, you know, and there's differences between Australia and New Zealand as well. If you look at brands like Hyundai or Mazda, we, we pay differently here in New Zealand. It's all about scale of the economy and, and about speaking the cars right and the distribution um, channels, all sorts of things. So, um, yeah, pricing's a hard one. You, you're not going to see a sub 30K BYD anytime soon in New Zealand, unfortunately. She's listening to me. All right. Well, what about the, uh, is it the Yang Wang? Yang Win? Yang Wang. So Yang Wang's our supercar brand. So um, for those of you who um, are still getting familiar with BYD, BYD is like the overall manufacturer. And then we have multiple brands underneath that. So Yang Wang is like our supercar division. And they have currently two models on sale in China. The U8, which is... Ah, yeah, that's the big uh, one, right? That's the big one. Lack of a bit of, closest description would be like a Land Rover Defender, but it's much bigger. 1,100 mm. horsepower. It's a super hybrid. Floats on water, amazing car. <laughs> this is madness. You can take it fishing. You, yeah, yeah the U nine. Yeah, the U nine looks like a could be any, anything. It looks like a Lamborghini or a Corvette. You know, it's a very beautiful car. Um, very very fast. It's got an amazing chassis. It can actually jump off the ground. It can drive on three wheels. Um, you know, it's a very high performance oh, hyper car. And then we've got other brands. There's uh, Feng Chung Bao, or we just call it Bao, which is like our off road brand. And you've got Denza, which is a, a, a slightly more upmarket brand. And then BYD amongst itself actually has its own other brands. We have the, the Warship series of cars, the Destroyer and the Frigate and the Corvette 07. We have the Ocean series being the, the Dolphin and the Seal. Um, and then you have the Dynasty series, which is um, things like the Atto 3, which is called the Yuan Plus and the Han. 
in the in the song. And those 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 um, brands actually have their own showrooms in China. They're actually considered independent brands under the BYD. Uh, any of those in, in right hand drive? Yeah. Well, here's the thing: if there is a market, if there is a market, and it makes financial sense, and there's a desire, absolutely, we can look to bring those cars in. And I would love to see um, the Yangwen product here in New Zealand. It's we're not ruling it out at all. Um, the future is very very bright, and the car, the the car industry is changing. The nature of the car industry is changing, right? One thing I will say is the New Zealand market is only so big. You know, we sell 150,000 cars a year. We're going to see another several brands launch into New Zealand this year. Um, but there's still only so many buyers, right? So the pie is only so big that it gets sliced up. Um, and, uh, you know, market share is changing. Um, yeah. 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 If, if there's room for it, we'll bring it in. You, you mentioned Feng Ching, or the, so the the Feng Ching Bao Bao Five. I think was Feng, launched Feng in the last Ching couple of weeks. We shown it. Now, to, we just call it Bao at the moment. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah. So the Bao Five. Now I had a, a close look through that car via the Wheels Boy channel on YouTube. Highly recommend people check out Wheels Boy. Great China based yeah. channel. Yeah, there's a great review of that car. Now, I did some maths. Had a look at the engineering on that. That is where our ute's coming from isn't it that's kind of the source vehicle for a lot of the I tech and the interior for the ute the, the, the interior in that looks exactly the same for the spy shots the ute the drivetrain sounds exactly the same so longitudinal rather than there's a great educated guesses and as you know car manufacturers um you know share platforms you know when you build an electric car or a plug-in hybrid you can build many different um sorts of vehicles mm -hmm. on a platform so mm -hmm. you know there is probably a whole lot of shared stuff there yeah yeah. So, so viewers, if you want to have a look at the interior of the new BYD Ute or a few of the details, then go and have a look at the Feng Ching Bao Bao 5 or the Bao 5 online. It's, it's, uh, an it's really interesting, really cool car. interior. It's a great car. Yeah, it's a big hint. There's your shocking thing today. You can go look at the interior of the BYD Ute now. You said that, Richard, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Very tactful. You're just drawing conclusions, but um, you got, I, you know, you'll, you'll be able to see the uh, the Ute. Uh, it's June's not too far away, my friends. So, yes, well, with, the, yes. with the big ramp up of electric cars over the last few last couple of years alone, massive changes just in the last two years. Mm -hmm. You're on the inside. What's the feeling you're getting from? I mean, you're connected. What are the feeling you're getting from more of the legacy brands that have been here, you know, for decades? Are they are they all well, excited look, or are they look, nervous look, or both? Look, the world the world is definitely changing, right? And you can see it in Europe sort of pushing their way forward, um, regardless of whether you're a petrol fan or not. I'm a big petrol fan. I love my cars. But um, definitely electrification is not going anywhere. It is definitely the future. Um, yes, there might be an international uh, slump in EV sales right now, but it is definitely all trending the right way forward. The real key is the battery technology, right? And we're going to see so much major advancement in battery technology over the next five years. I'm just super excited. We've got sodium-based batteries. We've got solid-state batteries now in the work. BYD's just had a, a, have uh, signed a collaboration um, with CATL. So the two world's largest battery manufacturers have now come together to, to, to work conjointly on, on producing solid-state batteries. It's a very exciting time. Yeah. Now, before we send you on your way, Warren, to battle Auckland traffic, uh, come on, you must have, you got any goss for us, any little product tidbit you can tell us that no one else has had yet? Come on, you <laughs> you must have some kind of hint of something we might be able to look forward to. Or Just like you mentioned my Tinder dating, I don't kiss and tell, Richard, but um, we have um, some exciting developments happening locally in our dealer network. Um, and I'm sure all will be revealed over the next few weeks. But uh, yeah, we've got the oh. new showroom in Nelson um, that's that's going to be open uh, later in March, and we've got some other announcements around the traps as well. So I know one of them, and it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty freaking amazing, but if you ask me. I've been sworn to secrecy on that one. So yeah, damn it. Yeah. And have you, either of you gone and checked that new showroom out on the North Shore? No, it's just the traffic. First of all, Auckland is is. Awful. Uh, <laughs> so the next, next BYD you're picking up from us, we're going to make sure you pick it up for the North Shore Gap. Oh. Um, that is <laughs> the Southern Hemisphere's most EV ready dealership. All right, we've I've got seen capacity. Pictures. Yeah, we've got capacity on that site to charge up to forty EVs at one time. We don't have that many charges at the moment, but we could we could technically do that. And that is an absolutely beautiful showroom, and we're thrilled to have uh, Andrew Sims' uh, team in that showroom. Uh, but that was designed specifically 
um, as a, a showroom of the future. All yes. right. Next yes. time on that on that part of Auckland, I'll check it out. But it just means having to go to Auckland. I've got to go to, just, go to Auckland tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not looking just forward Just go to steal it. some free electricity from them. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Can we get a hypercharge here, right? Yeah. Look, uh, thanks so much for joining us, Warren. Uh, no doubt we'll have you back on the show at some point to interrogate you further about some EV stuff. Absolutely. And maybe you may, might facilitate us doing an episode from some flashy BYD facility up in China at some point. Absolutely. We can absolutely do that. We're off to um, off to China next month, so I uh, might give you a call in then. Cool. Excellent. All right, guys. All right. Cool. That was the man of the hour, Warren Wilmot, also appeared as the Playgirl Centerfold in 1994. I might have made that up. Uh, <laughs> he'll tell me if he saw that. Um, yeah, so that is the EV guys. We've covered the guts, the most important stuff that has happened in New Zealand at this moment. There will be more mm. happening very soon, so do like, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, Richard, is there anything I've missed? I can't remember. No, it's, don't, I'm old. don't forget to go to to go to his <laughs> channel. Eco oh yeah, ask the channel. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Eco Tristy channel. This. Go go there and watch the videos because he doesn't. He gets a little bit upset when you don't watch. I uh, don't. And... I cry myself to sleep. <laughs> Healthy and tears. for more on that beautiful machine sitting behind him, you go to Kiwi EV Adventures on pretty much any social media platform. We need to talk more yep. about that in the future. Yeah, uh, yeah. and of course some progress mine, on that soon. Yes, and of course for mine, uh, uh, EVs and beyond. Uh, I had a bit of a patchy summer in regards to posting, but I have finally got editors working for me. Oh, so nice, I've nice got a lot sun. of videos banked up. A lot of videos that are going to come out, bang, 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 bang. Uh, so yes, you you should be subscribed to that as well. It really does. I know. I know. It seems such a such a tiny thing subscribing to a YouTube channel. It really does help us. I heard somewhere that Kiwis typically don't subscribe. They they like devouring YouTube content like any other person in other country, but they typically were really reserved when it comes to subscribing. And I don't know why that is. So if prove go, us wrong. If, if if I go to my channel, Gavin. Would I find you in my subscriber list? Good. I'll hold you to that. <laughs> I hope. I'm pretty sure I've subscribed to everything you've done. I'm, I'm terrible <laughs> at subscribing too, so, you know. Too, oh, okay, too, all right. Too, well, too much. Okay, so pot anyway, calling the kettle black here. <laughs> yes. Right. Thank you so much for joining us. Bit of an all over the rat place uh, That's fun. episode fun. this week. Uh, I'm losing my voice a little bit. Uh, but, uh, no, Gavin, you carried us. You carried us. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> That's been okay, fun, great. Richard. <laughs> yep. See you everyone next week. Uh, see you everyone in two weeks' time for the EV guys.